Let me give you just a few things, a few high points, and then we'll, we'll be dismissed, okay? Uh, on, on this thought, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in your Bibles, a storm is coming. A storm is coming. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51, the Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And, of course, we know that, that we, we already understood this morning that the believer's death is referred to in the Bible as sleep. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. That's on the wall in the nurseries as well. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, uh, someone's going to ask this question. Uh, I'll deal with it uh, 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 now just to, just to satisfy. This, this last trump, is, the, is that the, the, the last trumpet um, uh, of Revelation chapter 11 and uh, chapter 10, the, the, the last trump and in, 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 in all that kind of thing? Uh, no, I don't believe that is. I don't believe it is. And, and the reason why is found in, in this passage and in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And um, uh, the, the Bible's dealing with believers. Uh, believers are going to be gone during the tribulation. And, um, and so if you look at it very carefully, verse 52 says, In a moment, he's talking about we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now he's talking about people that are living, and he's talking about people that are dead. And when he's talking about the, the living, he says the last trump. If you'll find in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it talks about the, the, the trumpet shall blow, okay? Now, it tells us in 1 Thessalonians 4 that there's two resurrections, right? Uh, excuse me, not two resurrections. There's, there's two translations. There's two calls. The dead in Christ shall rise first, the Bible says. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds. It appears to me... And um, uh, I just, just looking at this scripture just as clearly and plainly and, and looking at, at the, at, at the uh, translation that we have is that is it not a fair answer to say that whenever, according to this, we're not told that it's, it's in two separate actions, but in 1 Thessalonians 4, it's two separate actions. So if there's a trumpet call for the dead in Christ, and a trumpet call for the living in Christ, wouldn't that make just simple sense? And we would go on the last trump, because God's a God of order. Uh, because it, it, it certainly makes absolutely no sense because uh, to, to say that we uh, would, because of this one verse, that it would throw everything else and all the other scriptures, they would throw, throw it out uh, to say that we would be going through the tribulation period. Uh, I'll say this and we'll move on. Be cautious and be so ever careful to not build a doctrine on one verse or one phrase. Don't do that. Make sure that you have Scripture com uh, uh, building uh, principles and, and uh, comparing Scripture with Scripture. The Bible goes on to say, uh, for this corruptible, verse 53, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Read verse 58 aloud with me, please. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I'm going to give you some key points and uh, keep you about maybe 10 minutes. Uh, some key points that help us understand prophecy. Uh, if, you, if you had a ship and you were navigating that ship by a compass, and that compass were just a little bit off. If you travel hundreds of miles in that ship, you're going to be way, way off course. So make sure that as you look into God's Word, that you, that you, that you abide by uh, some, some very simple principles of understanding prophecy. Number one, uh, seek a literal translation. Uh, excuse me, a literal interpretation. A literal, literal interpretation. Someone said it this way. He said... If the literal sense makes good sense, seek no other sense. Okay? 
Now, let me, let me illustrate that for you from a bad standpoint. From a bad standpoint is this. For the better part of 1,800 years and more, the Old Testament referred to Israel and, and having their land and all this kind of thing and the Abrahamic covenant and, and all this stuff in this time period that, that we refer to as the church age, okay? And because it seemed impossible for the Jews to have that fulfilled, then Bible teachers and preachers of the past and all that kind of thing embraced not a literal translation, I keep on saying that, literal interpretation of Scripture, but no, they decided to make it an allegory. And they tried to say, okay, since it doesn't make sense that Israel is going to have this fulfilled because they're scattered amongst, you know, all the nations and things and, and uh, the, the Turks and all you know, different folks and uh, fighting over Palestine and, and that kind of thing. So the Bible, God must be meaning the church, that all of this points to the church. And that was an accepted interpretation of the Old Testament prophecies about Israel all the way up through. Now, we find in 1948, and by the way, it started changing before, before Israel ever became a nation, about early 1800s. Um, but now that Israel has taken their place uh, back in their homeland in 1948, now we see that God was right all the time. God had it, God had it right from the beginning. And, and, but there are, there are a lot of people that say, you know, uh, that, that no, 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 no. All this stuff in the Old Testament about Israel, that it's all about the church. Folks, it's, it's, it's not. And, um, and we'll deal with that in the future. Literal ter interpretation. Uh, next, uh, keys to understand prophecy. And this, I this, uh, already, already kind of mentioned this, the land intended to Israel. Uh, don't, don't take what, what applies to Israel and try to force it in some way into, into another group of people. Uh, so what is, what is to Israel is to Israel. What is the church is to the church. And then number three, a key to understand prophecy, uh, the Lord's imminent return. The Lord's imminent return. So the literal interpretation, land intended to Israel, and the Lord's imminent return. These are three, three key points, three key points that will help steer you correctly. And, uh, and, and, and these, are, these, these are, are good anchor points. I mentioned to you that little postcard. Well, I ran across that, and I thought I'd throw it up there in case that you... Uh, uh, does it ring a bell? Have you seen that in the past? It's just an artist's rendition of what, what, what uh, the rapture might, might look like if, if, we could, if we could see it, you know, in spiritual eyes. I don't believe that, that uh, we're going to ascend... The Bible says it will happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye we just read. What's the twinkling of an eye? It's faster than a blink. A twinkling is, is, is when you don't even notice that you blinked, you know. So why do we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture? Um, now, Jesus called this time of Jacob's trouble, this time, uh, there, there's so many names for the seven-year period of God's judgment, but Jesus called a tribulation, Matthew 24, 21, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. If Jesus said there's never a day that's that ever in the past or ever in the future, my soul, uh, there's nobody that can imagine this. As you study uh, God's Word, make sure that you do study God's Word more than you study what other people say about God's Word, okay? Uh, I'm not saying that it's wrong to listen to others that have studied, studied the Word of God, but allow your desire to, to know what God has in store, allow it to draw you closer to the Lord and to love Him more. Okay? Not just to fill up our heads with knowledge. And, and so, uh, with, with this thought of pre-tribulation rapture and why, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He's not appointed us to wrath. And yet, uh, Revelation 6, 17 describes the, the tribulation. For the great day of His wrath is come, who shall be able to stand? 
So he's not appointed us to that, that wrath and that, and that judgment. Uh, and, and that's exactly what it is, according to God's Word. 1 Thessalonians 1.10, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. He's delivered us from the wrath to come. And I could go on. Uh, for the sake of time, uh, let, let's move our thoughts to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Jot down this, this, uh, uh, this, this passage, if you would. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. I want you to go home and read this passage. 2 Thessalonians 1, uh, excuse me, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. I want you to study it. We'll touch on it next time. Uh, because we, we had good questions. And, um, and, and the, the thought is, what is the day of Christ that is mentioned? What is the day of Christ that's mentioned? If you have a concordance, you might uh, compare Scripture with Scripture and see what the Bible says that the day of Christ is. And uh, uh, study it out for yourself. Be a Berean Christian. Um, so I'm going to, um, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Let me, just, let me just skip on down to, um, in Daniel chapter 9, this is a great passage to study. Skip on down there, guys. Daniel chapter 9, the final seven years of Daniel's prophecy is about Israel. Uh, there's 70 weeks of years, 490 uh, years, and, and you find that at the end of that 490 years, uh, from, from, the, uh, from the decree of Cyrus to rebuild uh, uh, Jerusalem, we find that to rebuild the, the, the uh, temple in Jerusalem, uh, rebuilding the wall, excuse me, of Jerusalem, the Bible says that um, there would be 77s, 490 years, we'll touch on that later, and only all of those years except for seven years were, were fulfilled. And Daniel prophesies that 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 last week, that last seven years would not be fulfilled, but, uh, but that for a later time, because the very date of Jesus entering into Jerusalem was the very date of the end of 483 years. And it's an amazing, marvelous thing that, that not, just, not just Christians, but uh, 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 un, unbelievers that, that, that in, in the uh, Roman calendar uh, picture that. So the seven years that, that we're talking about, the tribulation, is a prophecy to Israel. It's not a prophecy about the church. Uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, the church is pictured in heaven at the close of the messages to the churches. I admit to you, I very clearly and quickly, I'll admit to you that this is a picture, that it is not a, a, di a direct uh, statement that this is, this is what's happening. But it's at the end of the messages of the churches in Revelation 2 and 3. And in, in chapter, chapter 4, verse 1, after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee uh, things which must be hereafter. And in heaven, uh, the, the 24 elders uh, represent the, the church and, and, and the Jews, the leaders of, of these. Uh, Twelve is a number of government uh, in God's government and things. And the 24 represent both and, and all that kind of thing. So um, at the end of the church age, it pictures for us what the Bible uh, clearly says. And uh, in Hebrews 11:7, 7, the, uh, the rapture before judgment is consistent with the actions and character of God. I mentioned this this morning. Uh, about Noah, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man, that God provided an opportunity for people to escape His judgment, and they mocked at it, and they scoffed at it, as He was building, as he was building the ark. And uh, Hebrews 11, 7 says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So, very quickly now, Rapture before the tribulations, before the tribulation period, believers are not appointed to wrath. Prerequisites to the day of Christ, and that you'll find in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we'll touch on that. You're going to study that. Prerequisites to the day of Christ. Number three, uh, tribulation is prophesied to Israel. The church is pictured in heaven during the tribulation, and God evacuated his people in the past. And so he's consistent in this. Uh, folks, this is not just one reason. This is multiple reasons upon, upon reason upon reasons, and we could, go, we could go on with others. 
So um, um, I'll, I'll deal with the rest at a later time, the difference between the rapture and the second coming. And um, uh, let, let's, just, let's just do it real quickly because we won't have time later. Uh, skip on down a couple slides to the comparison chart. Uh, between the two, if you would, where you've got the, the rapture and the second coming. The rapture is in the air. Second coming is to the earth. The rapture has no signs before it. The second coming has many signs. The rapture is only given to us in the New Testament. It's a mystery in the Old Testament. It's hidden. And, and um, uh, the second coming is referred to in the Old Testament and the New Testament. The, the church is the focus of the rapture. Israel is in the focus in the second coming. At the rapture, the tribulation begins. In the second coming, the kingdom begins. These are two different events. Rapture and second coming. Two different events. And uh, so, uh, that, that's, that's a flyby. Okay? Let's stand together. Lord Jesus... Thank you that you loved us enough that you gave us evidence to put our faith in. Lord, you didn't have to show us things. You could have just said, trust me. But Lord, you, 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 you told us plenty, more than we'd ever need to understand and to realize that we can take comfort in the fact that absent from the body is present with you. We can take comfort in the fact that when you're pouring out your wrath that this world deserves, Lord, that we'll be out of the way. Thank you, Lord. Now help us to reach out to others that do not have that confidence. Lord, may we ask that question. Are you 100% sure if you died that you'd go to heaven? Lord, point us to those that are seeking you. Thank you for these wonderful questions. I pray that we will search the scriptures and Lord will please you with our life. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen.